What's up guys, I'm Nathan and in this video I'm finally back with the updated anime Dimensions tier list for the new One Piece update. It's been a really long time because exams were going on. Um, it's been over 40 days since I've uploaded. I'm sorry for that, I was not able to reply to every comment as well because like I said I was kind of busy most of the time. To make up for that, when we reach 5000 subscribers I might actually do a giveaway either on the new unit which we got or the new character which we got this update which is Kaido uh, and also or maybe even your if you guys want that uh, but yeah uh, S tier is gonna be for the best of the best characters for any of the modes um, I'm gonna probably make it a bit stricter for a, a character to get an S because in my previous tier list there was probably a bit too many characters in S uh, a tier is going to be for the characters that are very good, but just not the best, like not like top 5 and something. Uh, B tier is going to be the best for beginners, that's mostly going to be the gem characters and the really bad raid characters. C tier is going to be for the characters that are average for beginners and D tier is going to be for characters that are bad even for beginners. Starting off with Kaido or Beast King, he's definitely going to be a solid S tier and I think well, I didn't get him because uh, I'm not about to spend Robux for him, at least not unless it's a giveaway because I'm just free to play. Uh, but he has potential to probably be the best character for raids or at least top 3, I would say. Because he has an insane damage output. He's not amazing in dimensions because he lacks a dash move. But let me just quickly run through his moveset. His first two moves are kind of like Esper or Accelerator. They're pretty quick and they... Um, have a solid AoE. Now the third move is a better version of accelerators because it actually allows you to spam both your first and second moves. Now the first and second moves have basically the same damage uh, with the first move having a 6 combo and the se uh, second one having a 7 combo which is why I personally prefer uh, or would think that using the second move is better. Um, they both have the same pet energy gain. That's actually one problem of him. He doesn't have an amazing pet energy gain. But still, his moveset is just really high damage. His ultimate is kind of like Sung Jin Woo or Shadow Monarch, uh, in which uh, the ultimate actually gives you 100% crit chance, and as the assist, it'll give you 25% crit chance, which is really, really good. Um, next up, you have Yor. Now, Yor is probably going to be worse than Kaido when it comes to raids, because Kaido seems to have like the highest... DPS output that I can see at least from testing character testing But your is also a really good character even for dimensions I'm putting her a bit lower because the thing is Kaido also seems to have value to me as an Assist because of his 25% crit chance. However, honestly, they're kind of even uh, The thing is with your your also has the boss uh, your gives you a 15% critical damage and some boss life steal, so it's slightly worse but still very good assist if you want those buffs. Uh, now your first move is actually a dash which is like I said Kaido is lacking that uh, so he's not amazing on the mobility aspect. Uh, second move is pretty decent AoE good damage, the third move of your allows you to spam the first one however uh, the first move has the same damage but it kind of changes because you lose the dash like it doesn't give you a dash anymore and it has a lesser combo well it's actually it's good for raids because the thing is it Sungjin Wu having a spam dash kind of makes it hard to land all the attacks so in a, in a way it's kind of alright but for dimensions obviously you're losing out on that mobility that you could have got if she was just worked differently but still, it's really good. And the ultimate gives you boss lifesteal, which is not amazing if you have 100,000 stat collection points. But if not, I mean, she's pretty good. And also, 15% critical, 35% uh, critical uh, damage. Now, the assist, like I said, gives you 15% of that. So, overall, a pretty good character. I'm just putting, uh, honestly, I would say Kaido and Yor are more or less evenly matched. I can't really say one is better than the other. I might put Yor higher just because Yor is cheaper than Kaido, but Kaido is really good because Kaido is matching or uh, merging rather a hundred percent critical chance along with a move which you can spam, which isn't a dash like Sung Jin Woo. Like I feel like he's putting out more damage than Sung Jin Woo for me, but uh, I'm not really sure about that one. Uh, and obviously Sung Jin Woo is 
the best for dimensions as well. Anyways, next up we have Onohime or Yamato, who is probably the best gem character in the game that you can get right now, and the best overall, if uh, without a good pet. Like, obviously, if we're talking about Christmas Altar, I can't say it's the best for beginners, because Christmas Altar is pretty meh, honestly, if you don't have Kurmi. Well, she is good, but she's not insane if you don't have Kurmi. Kurmi, for those of you who don't know, is the best pet in the game, which removes the cooldown of all your attacks by a few seconds whenever you recharge it. So that can make some characters ridiculously spammable, and Christmas Altar just has a very high pet energy gain. Onihime, nothing crazy like that. However, she, uh, she is got a really good move set. The first one is a dash, which gives you speed for 6 seconds. The second move is uh, like a sort of auto-tracking in everything in your, uh, your range in 3 bursts. The third move is a uh, beam, which you can actually aim around, which is really good for those pesky bosses that dash around. And the ultimate is a movable one with full AoE, kind of like Kokushibo. So an amazing move set, obviously slightly lesser DPS because it's a gem character after all, but definitely recommend for you guys to get. Now, Tanjiro is probably one of the worst raid characters. He's pretty meh for dimensions. He's okay for raids. Um, the thing is, Tanjiro, well, he's got uh, he's got a dash move for the first one. The dash is, well, the dash is fine, but it's very inconsistent in damage. Even Onihime's dash is pretty inconsistent in damage. Yours dash actually has a good AoE and you can consistently get all of your combo hits. Um, but then the second move, it's kind of small AoE and it's sort of damage over time. The third move also has small AoE. The ultimate's pretty good and his assist is also relatively good, but still over... Uh, and also his ultimate will give you 50% extra damage on all of your moves. So his ultimate's fine, but the other three moves just aren't that great. So he's probably going to be towards low A tier. Alright. Next up we have Dio. Now Dio is probably the best character that you can get right now for raid tokens. Or the best free to play character that I can think of. Well obviously Sengton Wu is the best but it's not very easy for everyone to get. So I would say yeah just the best raid character. So uh, Dio has a very good moveset. Uh, which makes him very good for dimensions if you don't have insane stats because he can one shot just because he does a lot of damage. He lacks mobility but like the damage kind of saves him. If you have very good stats then you can definitely do better with other characters. In raids he's also amazing and as an assist he's also very good. Now his first two moves pretty solid once again kind of like uh, I would say on par with like Kaido and Accelerator. Like, uh, they're pretty good. Now, the third move stuns the enemies, plus it allows you to spam his first and second moves. Now, the thing that's really good about this is because, well, for Kaido, I'm not sure if there's a combo like that for Kaido. Honestly, there might be. But for Dio, for some reason, if you use both the first and the second moves when you're spamming, you can actually get six attacks out of that. Uh, now, the first one's a bit better. Uh, by the way, uh, x is the one that said this and it i tried it out and it definitely works you can get a crazy amount of damage with this so i recommend you check out his video for the combo but the first uh, move does uh, it's a little bit better overall it does some more damage and if you can use the first move four times and the second move twice it it just somehow works like if you use one by itself you can't actually do that many attacks but Doing four uh, of the first move and two of the second actually makes him really good. Now his ultimate, it's pretty solid. It does good damage, good AoE. It's a little bit slow, but overall it's a good move. Uh, so he's just a very balanced character and honestly uh, just an upgraded accelerator. Uh, Broly is going to be like bottom A tier. He still has value as an assist because of his good AoE and high damage. There's obviously other alternatives, but just because of that, I'll not put him down in D tier. Next up, we have As Death's Awakening. Now, As Death's Awakening does, it, at the very least, have the buff uh, when you use the assist. So, I mean, it's not completely terrible, but it's definitely not worth to get the Awakening since, first of all, you need to already have the character. It's not obtainable anymore. 
But if you have it on top of that, you need to spend more to actually get the Awakening. The Awakening is pretty good, but obviously it has a long cooldown, and the first four moves aren't that good. Next up we have Gilgamesh, who also has decent value as an assist, and also uh, some good value as uh, for time challenge, because uh, he's just pretty good there, because he's got really, really fast cooldowns. Um, I might put him like below even Broly. Then we have Kokushibo, who's going to be right here. Kokushibo is really good in dimensions, decent as an assist, not amazing in raids. So he's definitely not going to be in S tier because S tier is just going to be stuff that are really good for everything or insanely good at at least something. Then we have S death without awakening, which is mm, not that great. Honestly, I would prefer to use even Onihime. The thing is, uh, S death, well, the moveset's fine, but the damage is garbage. Uh, and, well, the moveset of Onihime is also probably better. Uh, then we have Karakuri, who is also bad. Now his ultimate is actually going to recharge the uh, or allow you to spam his first three moves, but the ultimate has a 70 second cooldown, which is trash, and his first three moves are just bad. Um, then we have Levi. Um, Levi without his awakening, honestly, hmm, not that good. Well, I would still prefer it over Karakuri, but... It, you definitely need the Awakening to make him good. But with Levi, the Awakening's actually worth it. Uh, and you know what? Actually, Levi might even be like low on A tier, even if we're not counting his Awakening, because the thing is, he does have some amount of mobility. Well, that's, that's a tough choice, if I'm actually going to put uh, Levi there. Yeah, I would say low A tier is fine for him. Or top B tier. Then we have Power. Power is going to be right there. Power is a solid moveset and definitely one of the good gem characters to get. However, since Onihime is there, I would definitely pick Onihime over Power. Next up we have Naruto. Naruto is a good assist, which is why I will still keep him in A tier. He is still kind of useful for something if you don't have anything else. Ryuko is definitely a very good assist because... Ryuko has a 60 second cooldown assist, and that's pretty good. Then we have Alice. Alice is probably going to be one of the better good for beginner ones. Well, she's technically better than characters like Broly, uh, honestly, because she does have decent damage output and stuff. But it's mostly like a beginner type character because a lot of her moves are around healing. Well, actually, I could probably put her like low A tier. I could. Yeah, that, that seems around fair for her. Uh, then we have Witch Megamine. Witch Megamine is definitely not that great anymore, but she's alright in time challenge and she's got really good AoE. Then we have, and plus nobody really has, so that's, that's another thing. <laughs> then we have Rengoku. Rengoku is decent as an assist, but I'm just gonna put him top of B tier. Then we have Saber, who's gonna be in C tier. Saber is pretty bad as a gem character, I don't recommend for you to get. Bakugo has good mobility, but still, for a gem character, it's pretty bad. There's a lot of better alternatives. Aizen is another Robux character, but I don't recommend for you guys to get him. He is going to be in A tier, obviously. Um, and he's got a solid moveset, but his damage just doesn't compare. Plus, Yor and Kaido are just way better. And Yor does cost the same cost. Uh, or cost the same amount of Robux. Then we have um, Yu-Gi-Oh, who's going to be towards low B tier, because Yu-Gi-Oh actually has a lifesteal uh, ultimate, and his ultimate and third move have really, really good AoE, and the first move is an amazing dash. So overall, his moveset is just really good, which is why I'm keeping him on B tier. I would definitely recommend him as an assist for if you're a beginner. Then we have Gojo. Um, Gojo is definitely good. Uh, but you need to have very good stats to actually use him. Uh, that is extremely high critical chance and critical damage. So if you don't have that, do not use him. Like I said at the beginning of the video, B tier is going to be for the characters best for beginners. So in B tier, I'm not including characters that require anything to actually be good. They're good even without having good stats or a good pet. For Gojo, there is a requirement. Then we have Kaneki, who is basically... Karakuri but worse, and Karakuri is already pretty bad, but, you know, probably better than Saber. 
without awakening and honestly saber is not even worth to get the awakening on then we have megamine megamine is going to be right here she's pretty bad um now fumi uh, now fumi is a support so i mean he's not terrible uh, actually he is pretty terrible and you probably shouldn't get him but i mean if you want to help people out sure though if you want to help people out priestess is probably better to bring anyways we have um, genos genos is definitely a solid c tier he's pretty good but there's still better options todoroki is all right ichigo final is a very well run character and i would say probably is the best uh, robux character but well he's on a playable now and i'm not even sure like the reason why i would say he's the best is because he was insanely good for both dimensions and raids kaido looks very promising for raids but for dimensions not really sure then we have vampire toga who is bad then we have um, goku now goku can spam dash however unlike with shadow monarch this dash actually doesn't do damage so you could use it for grouping uh, unless you're really unlucky and just miss something uh, and the accessory is pretty good as well but still even in dimensions he's pretty good but in raids he's not amazing just because he just lacks damage he's still going to be better than tanjiro and stuff but yeah he's going to be right about that then we have uh, emilia or winter spirit leo then we have zenitsu who is also pretty bad he doesn't have eye frames and his moves are uh, pretty close range then we have um emia who is pretty good actually for a 800 gem character but well it's not amazing and there are better options rumuru is decent good uh, assist if you're a beginner then we have asana who's probably my top pick if you can't save up 1600 gems and if you just want immediate if you're just starting the game just uh, ready in the codes and want something good asana is probably the best she has a really good move set she's got a, two dash moves and a movable ultimate and overall just an amazing move set then we have ichigo full brain who is decent he's not really amazing on either je- uh, on dimensions or raids but he's kind of decent on both of them uh, then we have uh, zoro who is okay but not amazing then we have all might who is decent for 600 gems but obviously asana is my top pick uh, rukia is pretty meh shinra is going to be like top d tier as well uh, actually bottom c tier he's got a solid solid move set it's just that his ultimate is not that good naruto beast with awakening is one of the best characters in the game right now uh, i would say right about here Uh, Naruto has an okay assist mainly if you're using the assist it would be if you are trying to uh get his buffs he is better than characters like Yor and Ichigo final in raids uh, though Dio still out damages him even in raids uh and in dimensions he is slightly better than Dio so he's kind of on par with Dio honestly um since dio doesn't need an awakening to be good i would say dio is better plus uh, naruto is no longer obtainable but they are essentially on par with each other overall but dio has the better assist so i would say he takes the win then we have sukuna sukuna is okay but still not very good for an 800 gem character gray just sucks honestly i'd say even rookie has better um control or makima the thing is She is the best character in raids but in dimension she's pretty bad and for that I'm going to put her like even below Kaido uh, with Dio mm, not really sure because Dio is definitely a lot more well rounded and Makima did cost robux um I would probably put Dio actually higher but still Makima is a very good character for raids Then we have Vampire Luffy. Vampire Luffy is pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to put him right there. Uh well, he was an anti unit. Uh, you can't get him anymore either way. Um then the next unit we have if I can recall. Yeah, actually Vampire Luffy should probably be below as death if I remember right. 
But uh, next up we have Christmas Alter, who is only good if you have Kurmi Pet. Now Christmas Alter has a very high pet energy gain, and uh, she's got dashes, so she's good in dimensions, and she's very good in raids. Um, so because of that, she's definitely going to be a top tier character, um, even above your and Ichigo uh, overall, because she's just good in everything. Except as an assist. She is a bad assist. But just f considering the fact that she's just a gem character, it's really good. Though you do need a very expensive... Technically, you need to spend 15,000 rate tokens for a potential to be realized. But, well, she's still good. Then we have Sasuke. Sasuke is alright. He's got some mobility, but not amazing. Then we have Tengen, who is viable as an assist. I would probably place him right about here. Um, he's got an okay move set for things like dimensions. Uh, I might, I might put him like right there, below Tanjiro, just below Tanjiro. Shadow Esper is probably going to be like below, yeah, right about there. Shadow. The thing with shadows is it's not worth to get it because. If you're going to get 2700 speed rate tokens, I would say just go for Sung Jin Woo or Shadow Monarch. Shadow Monarch is obviously the best because he has spam dashes. Uh, his third move allows you to spam his first move and his first move is actually a dash move. The second move is a pretty good damaging move with decent AoE and the ultimate will give you 100% crit chance. So he's the best unit in dimensions and the second best or, or maybe the third best with Kaido, I'm not sure. But still, one of the best in raids and a very good assist. So he's just insanely good at everything, which is why shadow units just aren't worth getting because they're just worse versions of the regular one. It's better to, like, if you're really desperate for that character, just wait for an anniversary or some kind of event and they're most likely going to come back because we've seen that a few times. Then we have uh, Akaza who actually resets all of his moves with his ultimate, which is pretty nice. We have Rumoru's Awakening, which is probably going to be right there because it's definitely not bad. And we have Obito. Obito is alright. I'll go ahead and put him um, right here. He's decent mainly for things like Time Challenge. And he's alright even in Dimensions. I might actually put him a bit higher, like towards higher A tier. Then we have um, a Priestess Shrine. Um, that's mainly if you want a support. The regular priestess is also just really good. Um, I would say, yeah, fine. I'll just put both of them in A. Then we have Emiya. Uh, oh, wait, no. Then we have Asta. The, uh, he's okay. Uh, Itadori is also a solid starter. Um, then we have Tanjiro, who is pretty bad. You do get him for free after some seven days of playing. Sakura is meh. The thing is, she actually has heals, so if you're using her as a beginner, plus you can get her for free from the first map. Uh, if you're using her as a beginner, you can actually, like, not die. Uh, Natsu is pretty decent. Uh, Killua is okay. Goku is not worth getting as a starter. Um, there's, like, Naruto and Ichigo are definitely better. Levi's Awakening is definitely really good, and I would say that's bottom S tier. It's just re really good in dimensions and also just high damaging even in raids. Uh, Chainsaw is probably going to be low on A tier. He's okay, but just not amazing at anything. Uh, I would just put basically even Naruto and stuff above just because Naruto and all those units actually have value as an assist. Denji is kind of bad at everything. Ichigo is the best starter to get, so I'll put him right there. Uh, Kirito is also going to be low on S tier because he's a good assist, mainly because you get that extra boss damage. Um, maybe I would just put him top A tier. Uh, or bottom. Yeah, you know what? I'll keep him bottom S tier just as an assist. And we have Luffy, who is really bad as a starter. Um, Naruto is pretty good, especially after the revamp. Uh, Deku is going to kind of be in the middle of them. Uh, Kirito, without his awakening, is just going to be in B tier. Um, he's got a decent moveset, but, well, I feel like on him is just better. Then we have Yorichi. Yorichi is alright, but not amazing. 
uh, I would say he's decent in dimensions, actually. So I would probably put him, like, right about here. Um, he used to have a glitch, actually, uh, which made him probably one of the best units in the game. But, well, he's still okay now. Then we have uh, Lamso, who's pretty bad. He's got amazing mobility, but his AoE and damage are complete trash, so just don't get him. Then we have Shadow Gojo. Now, Gojo already has the problem of pretty bad cooldowns, so if you're talking Shadow, that's that's not an amazing combo to have. Then we have uh, Priestess with Awakening, which is not bad. We have Nezuko, who's going to be... I would say right about here. Nezuko is definitely a very good unit. Uh, and if you got her when she was available, then that's that's pretty lucky because she's still quite good. Then we have Rimuru, who is not that good, actually. Uh, Rimuru's damage is just really lacking. Um, he does have like things like lifesteal, but it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Then we have... Uh, Milam. Now, Milam used to be probably the best unit in the game, or the best character in the game, but Christmas Altar just basically makes her obsolete because Christmas Altar is just her, but better in raids, or rather same-ish in raids, and way better in dimensions because Milam was complete garbage in dimensions. So I would say just top A tier, you do need Kurmi for her to be good. So if you somehow have Milam and somehow missed Christmas altar if you just like, quit the game during that exact time period that's that's unfortunate but I mean she's still good then we have regular priestess who I would say top B tier because well obviously everyone's gonna love you if you just bring priestess along because you're just gonna be helping the entire team uh, then we have Rengoku Rengoku with his awakening it's, it's definitely alright uh, it's decent as an assist as well um, then we have uh, Zoro. Uh, Zoro Summer was another RNG unit which, if I'm not mistaken, was obtainable along with Vampire Luffy. Um, so I'd probably put him around like mid A tier, right about there. Then we have Shanks. Shanks is alright, but not an amazing character. But I'll still definitely put him towards top of A tier. There are still like better options though. Then we have uh, Sabre Alter. Uh, Sabre Alter is definitely a pretty good uh, gem character. I might even put her in like B tier. It's just got like very good damage and de decent move set. No like crazy dashes or anything. Though the first move does give her some mobility. It kind of pushes her forward. Uh, so it's pretty decent to get as a gem character if you've got the ones that are higher up. Uh, then we have Eren, who is really good on time challenge, but not really good on anything else because he was nerfed really badly. So I'm probably gonna put him like right about here, above all the completely useless ones because he is still good on time challenge. His ultimate, allow uh, not his ultimate, his third move allows you to spam his first and second moves. His ultimate is pretty garbage. Then we have Infinity Gojo. Infinity Gojo is alright, especially as an assist, he's pretty good. Uh, as a main, he's kind of meh. Well, he's just ma the main problem with him is just that he's slow. Uh, but overall, a decent character. I'd probably put him actually above Tanjiro. Um, right about there. Uh, then we have Shadow as death, which is. Mm, it's just not it. Uh, because uh, it's just as dead but slower. It's just don't get her. Then we have Shadow Yorichi. That's gonna be a lot lower on A tier. Like right about here. Then we have uh, Misaka. Definitely one of the very good ca uh, gem characters that you can get. Uh, she's pretty good on raids and in dimensions. Just overall. Uh, not any spectacular moveset. But it's just really good overall. Uh, in terms of damage output. Uh, as per our accelerator is definitely gonna take a solid spot in S tier. Uh, he's good on dimensions, good on raids, and good as an assist. Basically a slightly lesser version of Dio. 
uh, Shadow Rumoru is going to be uh, well he, he's pretty bad because Rumoru is already <laughs> insanely slow so he's gonna be like right about here then we have uh, Diablo which is another really good gem character he's good as an assist as well because his assist actually gives you iframes or invincibility frames uh, and his moveset overall is pretty good Astolfo or Best Boy Summer is also a very good character uh, mainly as a support so if, once again if you want to help people out it's it's pretty nice uh, for other players then we have Shadow Eren which is not that good and I would put him probably like right here then we have because he basically loses the one thing which makes him good and that is spam ability so it's pretty bad then we have uh, Luffy Gear 5 which is all right, but nothing amazing. Uh, we have Karakuri Summer, which is not that good. Uh, then we have Luffy's Awakening, which is still bad. And then lastly, we have Saber's Awakening, which is also bad because it's just not really worth getting. So that's pretty much it for the tier list. It was a pretty long one. Because uh, I had to really explain in detail most of the ones that I missed earlier. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you guys want to see that uh, giveaway that I mentioned earlier. I might post a poll on that if we actually can reach 5,000 subscribers. Uh, I'll probably put it on the Discord server if ever I do that. Uh, so make sure you join it. The link will be in the description. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.